Are we drafting Mike Evans or are we drafting Chris Godwin this year? Do you want Julio Jones or Calvin Ridley? Which one has more value? Jonathan Taylor, Marlon Mack, Jordan Howard, or Matt Breida? They're basically going at the same place. Which Giants receiver are you targeting or which one should you? We got some teammate turmoil going on today. We're going to go through all of these pairings and much more today and tell you who you should draft this season. Like, subscribe, let us know who you think, uh, who you think your favorite pair is, and let's get into it. Let's go, guys. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos. Back at it again. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, episode Legal tw- drinking age. Legal drinking age 21. Man, I'm going to lose count. We I, I like I don't know if we need to keep like stating the episode number. I just I'm going to, you know, we're going to be at 100 soon, you know? We're just we're just going up. Two That's a, a lot of work ahead of us, isn't it? It is. It's a lot of great fun is what it is. It's a lot of time just two dudes hanging out at 10:45 p.m. talking mm-hmm. fantasy football. Alex, how you been? It's been 2 days. Yeah, I mean, we're starting late tonight because, uh, you know, sometimes when you have a newborn and um, you give them the boob and that doesn't work and you change their diapers and that doesn't work and they just won't fall asleep. They just want their dad. No, no, they just really need to poop. And sometimes... <laughs> So, you know, this is the second consecutive podcast we're leading off with poop, but uh, sometimes you just got to get those legs working yeah. and uh, it just <laughs> loosens them up a little bit. And uh, me and my daughter have something called the poop position. You needed this. Yeah, the poo, yeah, the poo emoji. Now, I got the real thing. I don't need the emoji anymore. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I just put my daughter right in my stomach, her head between my legs and just work those legs until she basically poops on me. So um, that, that that took like a solid like half hour work. She grabbed my hand really tight and like, Aah! so we, we got it out and she finally calmed down and now she's in bed and I'm recording a fancy football podcast instead of sleeping. So oof, this man, is rough. Wow. Side note, uh, I, I feel like we've gotten a lot of positive feedback on our on our last episode, um, just talking about um, COVID impact and what to do on fantasy leagues. If you haven't checked that out, you should. Um, I, I actually think it was my favorite podcast that we've done so far, um, just because it was more just kind of us talking back and forth and just trying to figure out what we're going to do this year. Um, you know, I, I don't know if there's a right answer or a wrong answer, but it was just kind of fun to to bounce that back and forth off of each other. So I, I hope that came through when people were listening to it. And nobody's really said anything to me about what we've missed. So um, yeah. I feel like we did a pretty good comprehensive job. And no, no two people, I think, are agree, going to agree on all of the different things that you could do. But if you found any value in that discussion while we're here talking about previous videos and things and future videos and things, why don't you go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe for more Fantasy Football Sackos content. Let's plug We'll that. be here. We'll be here. Um, so today's episode, we are doing uh, teammate turmoil. So... Teammate turmoil is uh, two players or multiple players on the same team. Um, And we're going to talk about their ADPs and, you know, of these players on the same team, who we like more um, and who we think you should draft and who we think you shouldn't draft. So with that, let's get into it. Teammate turmoil. Teammate turmoil. All right. So our... Our first, um, well, let's. I want to get the elephant out of the room. We are not going to be talking about Cooper Cup and Robert Woods uh, tonight. Um, we've already gone extensively, uh, gone into these two players extensively in our wide receiver uh, rankings podcasts at the end of the first one and then again at the beginning of the second one because we disagree so much on who we think should be taken first this season. So if you want our thoughts on Robert Woods versus Cooper Cup, go ahead and listen to either one of those podcasts. Um, but let's start off with a potentially higher drafted pair. 
that being Mike Evans versus uh, Chris Godwin. Who do you prefer more and why? The uh, Chris Godwin is currently going uh, ADP 23rd overall. Our consensus ranking has him at 25th overall. Um, and Mike Evans is currently going at 27th overall. Uh, our consensus actually has him at 22. So our consensus ranking has Mike Evans ranked higher. Um, do you f- still feel the same way? Cause that was probably a month ago that we put all of these ranks together. Yeah. I mean, I think so. Um, yeah. I, I, f- I feel like he just has the higher floor of the two because, you know, we, we talked about this in, in our wide receiver one episode a little bit, but you know, Mike Evans has never had under a thousand yards receiving in a season. And I mean, he's been doing it since 2014. He's still not that old, like he's still not that old, you know, uh, he's, he's going to be 27 this year and he's put up a thousand yards every single season. And now he's got, now he's got Tom Brady. Um, I, and obviously so does Chris Godwin. Um, but you know, Godwin's only done it the one year and I don't know how much different that offense is going to be. So maybe Godwin's still going to be fine because if, if he's running more of the, Julian Edelman routes underneath out of the slot and Mike Evans is running deeper routes like Mohamed Sanu would be or Nikhil Harry would be in, in that offense for, for the Patriots. And I, I know they're not running the Patriots offense, but, right. um, you know, theoretically, if if they're running 12 personnel, though, and you have Gronk and OJ Howard in the game, they're going to be running those intermediate routes more than Chris Godwin will be. So if you were... You know, if they're truly not running three wide receiver sets and Godwin is lined up on the outside, similar to Evans, I think I like Mike Evans more only because he's shown the propensity to do it. I know Godwin finished higher than him last year, um, but I I think you just kind of got to go with the security blanket of a guy that's repeatedly done it year after year. And so I think that's why you go Mike Evans. So in our individual rankings, we actually have these guys, both of us have them ranked back to back in our individual positional rankings. Uh, It's just whether or not we have, you know, who first. Um, I think it depends on the day, how I feel. And I feel like I could argue for both of these guys to be drafted one over the other. You where, know, where they're going, though, like at the end of the second round, early third round, I f- like I feel like there's tremendous value for both of them. Where they're being taken, huge value there. Yeah, and so like that was one of the things that I, that I also wanted to talk about because for some of these, I want to talk about you know who else is going around them and if I like those guys more than these players. Um, mm-hmm. But Evans and Godwin, if you start out like running back quarterback or running back tight end and you can get or even running back running back like Godwin and Evans both have a chance of being like top five wide receivers this season. I don't feel like there's anything wrong with having them be your wide receiver one and you could go. There's still it's amazing how much more value there is in the middle rounds. Uh, like like the late early to middle rounds uh, at wide receiver, how much more value there is at wide receiver than there is at running back. I feel like there, you know, if you don't go running back in the first round, like or, or one of the first two at least, um, you're really passing up on value because uh, running back is a lot more shallow in the in the middle rounds than wide receiver is. Um, so I think I'm gonna end up. I think I'm going to explore and get a tight end or go running back, tight end, running back or, you know, whatever, and and then come back and get that wide receiver value than the other way around. But as far as Godwin versus Mike Evans goes, um, you know, we talk about that. Maybe maybe Gronk is going to take away some of that middle of the field routes that Godwin uh, you know, was was so known for last season. Uh, he was second in the NFL last year in slot yards per game. Like the guy commanded the slot routes, the slants and the outs and all those things. And if you have OJ Howard, Cameron Brayton, and Gronk, like, I don't know, are those yards still going to be there? I think that they will. Um, I think that Godwin's going to be the guy that's running the Julian Edelman routes that Brady loves so much to throw. 
Um, and, and he's such an elite route runner and great. And he's so great at creating, um, separation that I, I really think Brady's going to love throwing to the guy. Now, Mike Evans, like his, his thing is like, well, well, maybe, you know, everybody thinks that Brady's just going to throw those quick routes to Godwin and, and Gronk is going to erode some of that red zone, the red zone targets that Mike Evans has had um, and potentially take away some touchdowns. But like this offense could score so many points that it doesn't matter. Like yep. Mike Evans could still get his. And as far as Brady not being able to get it to his number one, like I understand it was a decade ago, but the guy could not stop pounding Randy Moss with touchdowns. Like if he has that number one, then he's shown the ability to feed him. It's just that he's not, you know, he's what 43 now and surviving off of kale chips, you know, like, I don't know. That's that to me. That's the question is whether or not he can chuck it down the field to, to Mike Evans and get those giant chunk plays uh, like Jameis did last season. But I think both of these guys are tremendous value. I mean, if I had to pick one right now, if I had to pick one, I would probably, I would probably go Godwin at the beginning of the third. If I went like running back, running back or running back tight end or something. And I'm, I mean, both of them are amazing value if you can get them in the third. Yeah, I mean there was there was five targets separating the two guys last year. Crazy. Same off same offense, different quarterback. Um, plus Gronk. You know, Chris Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. And and Chris Godwin with five more targets caught nineteen more balls and had like two hundred more yards. So, you know, he, he's just getting more um, you know, potentially underneath routes to your point out of the slot. And Mike Evans is more of the home run hitter. So um like overall for the season, I feel like Mike Evans has a higher floor, um, but potentially on a game by game basis, maybe Godwin has the higher floor because Mike Evans is going to probably be more likely to pop off for those 20, 25 point weeks um, and have down weeks versus versus Godwin. So I, I think they're really close. I prefer Evans. You prefer Godwin. I don't think there's a wrong answer there. Um, no, I, I, think I think they're I think they're very close. Other. Yeah. Um. Now, do you want to talk ADPs about anybody else going near them? I mean, you really only have like, uh, let's see here, Kittle, Galladay. I mean, James Conner is the first person that came to mind for me. I don't know. James Conner, I feel like, is also could be a huge value in the third round if he stays healthy. So is Chris Carson. Um, I mean, those are really the only guys that I would even consider and may, uh, potentially a tight end if Kittle or Ertz are there. Or I'm not, I'm sorry, Kittle or Kelsey, rather. Yeah, I I don't think, like, well, where they are, I don't know if it's even necessary to really talk about it because you know if you're going to take one of them or not. Because yeah. basically, if you're taking them at the begin, you know, end of the second, early third, you know that you're starting out with a running back in in the first three or four picks. Yeah, and then it basically comes down to you. Do you want to go Mahomes? I don't think Lamar will be there. And then, do you, do you want to take him in the second, or do you want to hope that they snake back to you in the third? Yeah, and who would right. you and, you know? And who would you take with that second pick instead? Is it a tight end, um, or is it a, a different running back or, or wide receiver? And then hope that they come back to you in the third. Um, so I don't, you know, I think we can talk about that for other guys, but just because they're so high up on the board, I don't know if it really matters. And you're, you're kind of going to be forced to take one of them um, because yeah. of the nature of the snake draft. Exactly right. If I mean, again, we're talking snake drafting here, not auction. But like, yeah, again, if if you're snake drafting, then you're. I mean, either way, you're going to probably try to play the the ADP game and get a tight end or a quarterback or something with, uh, with one of the other picks, but you're probably still targeting one of these guys. So, yeah. And, and the way that, you know, that they were being drafted last year, I, I do know some teams that had Evans and Godwin, um, on the team. Yeah. And so like you were guaranteed to, <laughs> to have a touchdown, uh, at least one and like 150 yards a week, essentially from, from two guys. Um, but I, yeah, I don't think that's going to, I mean, I guess it could happen this year. You could take both. And if Tom stays healthy, you'll be okay. But um, kind of weird to think about. Th these yeah. would probably be the two guys that you could do that with. 
Um, moving on, our next um, our next teammate turmoil pair is Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley. Julio Jones has a current ADP of 16th overall, uh, and Ridley is going all the way down at 41st overall. Uh, Julio Jones last season was top two, or I'm sorry, he's been top two in receiving yards for five straight seasons. He's averaged more than 1,550 receiving yards over the last six years. Um, And, you know, you also... Uh, yes, Ridley's amazing and he did very well and he's going to, I think, do great things this season. But I think that also could help Julio and potentially uh, keep some of the double teams away from him in some situations, maybe uh, helping Julio score. And then compared to Ridley, who was wide receiver 25 last season and half PPR, commanded almost a 20% target share after Mo Sanu was traded. Um, you know, that 20% target share is high. Uh, but it's not it's not like, you know, wide receiver one overall target share levels. Uh, however, they threw the ball almost 700 times. So even though he didn't have the elite of the elite target share percentages, he still commanded an extremely healthy amount of targets um, because they threw the ball 686 times. So still going to be tremendous volume there for Ridley averaged um, eight plus targets, almost six catches, 80 plus yards and a touchdown every other game after Sanu was traded and outscored Julio on a, like a per, like a game against game basis uh, again, after Sanu was traded. Um, I mean, you have dirt cutter taking over the offense again. We've talked about what that means for Matt Ryan. Like he had extremely productive seasons under dirt cutter from 2012 to 2014 throwing for a minimum of uh, 415 completed passes, 4,500 yards, and at least 26 touchdowns in each of those seasons with a high mark of 32. You lose Austin Hooper, freeing up 97 targets. I mean, yes, you add Hayden Hurst back in there, but I don't. Hayden Hurst, Helmsley, Triple Triple H, H. please. There you go. So I don't, for me, honestly, at the Julio Jones at sixteenth, yeah, I mean, where, 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 right? Where are their ADPs? Who who is at sixteen and what's Ridley at? Forty one. Okay. Uh, honestly, this I'll put it to you like this: I'm I'm probably not going to get either of them this year because at sixteen, I like the value at other positions more than I like Julio, and at forty one, I like other receivers more than I like Ridley. Ridley. So. That's fair. If I had to pick, I would probably go. I'd. I don't know. It's like, do you go with the fifteen hundred yards? I don't know. What so, would you do? Yeah, I mean, here's here's my thing. If you have to rely on your rankings, so when you when you get to a spot, and if Julio's the highest ranked player on your board, you should clearly take him because he's again, it's a track record thing. When he's averaged over 1,500 yards a year since, uh, what, 2014? Is that is that what you said? He's something, something averaging 1,564 yards over the last six years. Yeah, since 2014. Yeah. And so four, 14 points a week um, I have in my notes from from our wide receiver one show. And it's it's one of those things where he's just so good. And if anything... I don't think his targets go down. Like even if they throw less, they're still going to make sure that Julio gets the ball. And I, I think if if anything, that Ridley's targets, you know, would see the decrease if they threw the ball less. And I know you talk about Dirk Cutter, Todd Gurley's there. I think they're going to run the ball a little bit more, maybe be more of a ball control offense. Um, yeah, that could hurt in the red zone a little bit more if you got Gurley running it in and they're not throwing it. Sure. So I, I do think that that could hurt both of those players. Um, I, I've always had a thing for, for Julio. He's just a physical specimen. Um, and again, like I've, I said this before, but Julio Jones in NFL history averages the most yards per game, which is 96. And the next closest is 87, which is Michael Thomas. So like he, you're provided he stays healthy. And I know I feel like Julio always gets like, you know, 
even going back to college, I think he had the cracked foot or whatever. And he, has, he had screws in his foot or I don't know if he still does or not. But I always feel like he gets dinged up like week two or week three and he just like battles through an injury every year. Yeah. Um, he had the bad back issues for a while too. Yeah. Um, I mean, I clearly Julio Jones is the better of the two players. That's why he's going uh, 25 picks ahead of Ridley. Um, so I... I think that, and and one thing that we're that I should mention when we're going through these people is, if you don't get one, you should target the other one. Like, because the the difference between these guys isn't like massively huge, and we've talked about it. Ridley will have weeks where he outscores Julio on a relatively frequent basis because of him scoring more touchdowns. Now, if Julio ever figures out how to get in the end zone, then that it won't even be a comparison. And I feel like that there's a decent chance it's with that. coming. Well, yeah, you it's have coming. Hooper scored six touchdowns in 10 starts last season. He played in 13 games, but he scored six touchdowns in 10 starts. Like, I understand Hurst is going to be there, but you don't know if all of those goal, like end zone targets are going to stay at the position or they could potentially go to other targets that he's, that Matt Ryan, I don't know, has played with for like the last 10 years in Julio Jones. So, yeah, I mean, Again, since 2014, he's had one season under 1,400 yards total, and it was last year, and he only had 1,394 yards. So, I mean, you can basically pencil him in for 1,400 yards every year. That's almost 100 yards a week. Um, So, you can't argue with that. The consistency is there, and if he ever starts scoring, like if he had a 10-touchdown year, oh, my God. Um, So, like... For that reason, I I don't mind taking Julio in the second round. That'd be a round. long time coming, man. Yeah, and I, I've talked about it before. I love the wide receiver, wide receiver. Give me give me two good ones to start. So if I can get Tyreek and Julio, um, or Michael Michael Thomas and Julio, um, both down in the AFC South, where they're going to be shootout games between the Bucks, the Saints the Falcons and the Panthers, like all those games should be like 35, 31 shootouts, 38, 30, 35, 42, 38. Like all of those games should be very high scoring. And so I want as many players as I can possibly get from the AFC South Mm -hmm. or sorry, NFC South. NFC. Okay. Um, I guess for me looking at where Ridley's going, like David Montgomery is going there. I love David Montgomery as a potential RB two. Uh, Juju's going there. I would probably take Juju over Ridley. Uh, Ellen Robinson is going after Ridley. I would prefer Allen Robinson. And so is Bob Woods. He's like, going after Ridley. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I would take all of those guys over Calvin yeah. Ridley, so, which is why I think yep. I'm going to miss him. And that's not that I think he's bad. Like, I think he's going to he he could very well be like a wide receiver too. But like these guys I have penciled in as wide receiver ones. So, yep, I'll take that. Yeah, um, I agree. All right. Moving on. Changing positions. We've talked about a lot of receivers. Let's talk RBs. Always good to change positions every once in a while. Mm, every two minutes. Now, <laughs> let's go. Let's go to Indianapolis. Let's talk about Jonathan Taylor and Marlon Mack. Do you, uh, any immediate thoughts? I'm trying really hard not to laugh, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll take it out then. Um, no. Uh, so with these guys, this comes down to one's a rookie running back. One has proven to be a successful NFL running back that cannot stay healthy. Okay. So. Right. <sighs> I mean, that's, and, that's, that's a couple of these. Yeah. Right. No, it, it's true. So, so Taylor's going for 49th is his ADP and Marlon Mack is 65. I have different ADPs, but I looked at sleeper today, but yeah. Yeah. I close enough. That um, same. Yeah. That same area. End of, yes. End of the fourth round for Taylor and uh, mid sixth for Mack. That's ridiculous. I mean, to take a rookie running back that uh, is basically in a three headed system there between like so you got mac you got taylor and you have naheem hines and so you hate do, the jonathan taylor value i do and can like can you imagine i'm falling like, in love with him so can, i okay that's fine but can you imagine taylor missing a block 
and Philip Rivers is just like throwing his I hands don't think up he'll be in like, on passing downs. I don't think he'll be in. It's not. I think it's Naheem Hines. Okay, so I think that discounts his value right away. So you're taking you're taking a running back that I think for the first half of gonna, the season it, it's Naheem isn't going to catch the ball, and you're taking him in the fourth round. But I think it's only the first half of the season potentially, like the first month. Like you know, like I I think that. Jonathan Taylor has three down back potential. I just he think he fumbles a lot too. Okay. He also ran for 6,100 rushing yards, the fourth most in FBS history, and is the two time Doak Walker award winner. Like the guy Did you is say not Doak a slouch. or Dope? Doak. Okay. He is, he's pretty dope though. Uh, can you name the only other two two time Doak Walker award winners in history? Ricky Williams. It's one. I can't. Bo Jackson. No, not Bo. Really? Not uh, Bo. Barry Sanders. Not Barry. He was my really? initial thought. Yeah, not Barry. Um, Ron Dane? Run DMC. Oh, okay. Darren McFadden, Arkansas. Uh, Jonathan Taylor ran a position best 4 3 9 40 and also had a solid. Uh, just over second three cone drill, despite being 5'10", 226. Like that size to me is like the perfect running back size. Yes, he had a fumbling issue. He had 18 of them. And he also dropped nine of 68 targets. Like I get it. I, I totally get it. But I think he has three down running back potential. And he's behind like anybody that's behind this line. The Colts last year were fifth best in rushing yards before first contact on running back carries. Like they have a disgusting offensive line. Um, he's just, he's a, he's a titch pricey for me. Um, given that it's Mac true. is there uh, Mac running back 20 last season, 247 carries just over or just under 1100 yards had eight rushing scores, only caught 14 catches. Only had 14 he's catches st- He's year. still there, though. Like, you have a 1,000-yard back there. So, you know... I don't even think he gets he, the ball. Yeah, but even if he was to just straight up replace Mac from a production standpoint, you said he was running back 20 last year? Uh, Running back 20 and half PPR scoring. Okay. He's RB2. Okay. But so, I think he's better than Mac, and I think he could potentially be a three-down back in the second half of the season. Yeah, I, I think you're you're paying for his ceiling there. Um and I think he had like and the depending fourth, on what fifth? goes Yeah. I mean for he's going as the twentieth yeah, he's going as the twentieth running back, right? Somewhere in there if he's going in the fourth. Yeah, I mean, somewhere. I guess I, I didn't count specifically which running back that was in, in terms of numbers, but uh um, the guys going around him, th- this is the issue that I have, which is that late, early, like, you know, third through sixth round receiver value where Taylor's going, DJ Moore is going, Tyler Lockett's going, Bob Woods and DJ Chark are all going there. Like, yeah, it's going to be next to impossible for me to pass over any of those guys to draft Jonathan Taylor. Like to me, the vo- the value just is no longer. I don't want a rookie running back when I could draft a potential wide receiver one. Um, I mean, unless it's like the Zeke running back, like yeah, I'll, 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 right. I'll take them. But it's not. And again, I especially this year, I don't want to pay for potential. You want to know expo- what you're getting in a COVID season? Yeah, I want to. I want to know. Um, and generally, I'm, I'm averse to rookies anyway. Um, yeah. But I, I just, I want to know. I'll never forget um, how much you ripped on me when I drafted Kareem Hunt. I mean, our whole league did when he was a rookie. I took him in the third round. Everybody thought I was nuts. Yeah, but that's that's different because it's an Andy Reid running back. Yeah. Like, well, and Reid said he was going to be a three down guy. Right. And he was the only guy there. In this situation, when you have a th- literally three different running backs, that and two of them basically do the same thing. I just I just don't want anything to do with it. Yeah. Especially at that price. If if you're gonna force me to take one, I'm gonna take Mac a round and a half later. Well, I'm just 
for me, Max like completely off my board. Like I think the guy is probably yeah, gonna I wouldn't lose like his that. Job. I think the guy's probably gonna lose his job, and the people that are going where he's going now, he's going at sixty eighth overall in ADP. Well, he was today on sleeper. Ronald Jones is going sixty ninth. Like nice, yeah, buddy. Uh, Cam Akers is going seventy first. I think he has a better chance of having sustained value over the season. And again, potentially like that is maybe when I'm comfortable starting to gamble on rookies. When we're talking the seventies, not the late forties, um, Jordan Howard, 85th overall, that's criminal for what could be a low end RB two. Brandon cooks at 73rd and Michael Gallup at 77th. Like, I think I like all, I know I like all those guys more than I like Marlon Mack this year. So, yeah. Yeah, and to, and to your point that, and you've kind of been preaching this to me for a little bit now. Like, there's just so much more wide receiver value in the mid rounds, and there is running back value. So, should you be looking at taking a running back earlier, you're starting to swing me a little bit towards that because it just seems like there's so many more, you know, wide receiver twos available in the in the fifth, sixth, seventh round than there is RB twos. DJ Moore. Tyler Lockett, Robert Woods, DJ Chark, or draft Jonathan Taylor. Like that's, that's a no brainer. Close. No, yeah, not close. So and then hate, in the hate, yeah, hate that value. Yeah. Um. All right, let's move on. Uh, going back Hold, south again. Sorry, just one more thing. I was just gonna say those like that division's rough to just from like a. Like you got the Colts, you got the Texans, you got the uh, Titans, and you got the Jags. Like the Jags defense is is probably the worst of those four. But dude, they got Leonard like the, fullback. I love my guy, but the I just think that those teams just play traditionally very low scoring ball control games, oh, where the Andrew game's Luck. just going to go quick, and there's just not going to be that much opportunity for any of those those backs. Um, so just just putting that on on the radar. Unless, That's an like, interesting take. Like like Derrick Henry, you know he's going to get the ball eighteen times because he's Derrick Henry is the only guy there. But if you're talking about the Colts and you have potentially three different backs to feed, you know on a given week, are you really going to know that that Taylor is going to get more than fourteen carries? Like you just you can't you can't know that. Um, and for the fourth round pick, it's just like that's absurd. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I honestly, of any of those like running backs, the one I think that might potentially have the most value if he's healthy and decent is David Johnson. Like you could get him criminally late right now if he turns into a three down back, but let's yeah. yep. back, back to teammate turmoil. Uh, we're going back South again to the great state of Florida we're going to be talking about uh, Jordan Howard and Matthew Breda. The bread man. The bread man. Howard's current ADP is 85th overall. Breda going a whopping two picks later. I don't understand this one at all. Um, our consensus ranking for Jordan Howard is 54th overall. So we're like three rounds <laughs> higher than his current <laughs> ADP. Our consensus ranking is 101st overall for Breda. So weird. They got these guys 50 picks apart and they're going, they're being drafted two picks apart. Yikes. Um, it's like, do you want the first, second down and goal line back for Miami? Or do you want Matthew Breda yes. who can't stay healthy, is talented, but can't stay healthy, like comes off at the beginning of every game injured, gets a shot of whatever, comes back in the game. Like the home run change of pace guy, or do you want 15 touches a game in Jordan Howard? Like and yeah, the guy's I, talented. I, yeah, I don't. I, this isn't close. No, for me, I, I I can't believe they're going as close together as they are. Um, no, you know, I in mean, the yeah, Jordan Howard should be going way, way, way earlier than he is. I think he will at least in leagues that you and I draft in because like that that value, like I wouldn't want to miss him and wait for yeah him. early early eighth round for a yeah. starting running back. That's yeah, he, criminal. That's stupid. He was sixth in DVOA last season. Ahead of guys like Aaron Jones, Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry, and Nick Chubb. Like he was extremely efficient with the football. He averaged almost four and a half yards a carry last season, uh, and was on pace for twelve scores. Like he's one of the best goal line runners in the league right now. But yep. the only player he's a that bad dude. 
Yeah. But the only player that's going right where these guys are that I, it, it depends on how shallow I am at receiver, but Tyler Boyd is also going right here. And that's I, also so low. That is. So that might be right here. If, if, if for some reason I haven't drafted him already and I get here, I would potentially consider Tyler Boyd over either of these if I'm short or shallow at receiver. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like because we've watched Jordan Howard relatively close over the last five years um, oh, between yeah. the Bears and, and, and the Eagles and and like – you know, I'm on. I'm on. I'm reading something about Jordan Howard, running backs coach Eric Sudzefiv, whatever. Uh, lauded Howard's Easy for experience you to say. Tuesday. Yeah, but said it's still too early to decide how backfield staffs will dispense. Like we know Jordan Howard's oh, going to be the on, bell man. Like we know that he's going to be the bell cow in that offense. There's like, no Breed way. Is a change of pace guy. So they they know. You know what though? They're probably thinking about how much work they need to give Patrick Laird. I bet that's what they're hung up on. (laughs) Patrick fall ahead forward for one yard Laird. Yeah. I I mean, (sighs) I'm trying to, so, I mean, we went to school with uh, a family whose last name was Laird and they owed a funeral home. And that's, (laughs) that's like all I think about whenever I hear the last, you know, Laird. And so like, that's that's what I think of Patrick Laird's fantasy value. Um, it's is non-existent. Just a, f- just a funeral home for that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but I, so between the two, Jordan Howard's a guy, and it, this is this is not not close in my opinion. But no. ADP two spots difference is dumb. I mean, even if you draft him in the sixth or seventh, like getting a starting running back that early is still insane value. Um, all right. Flip flop. Yeah, and, pos- and, and I would take Jordan Howard over Jonathan Taylor personally. Like, yeah. Like, I, if you're going to compare the two, like, I feel like Jordan Howard has more value. I just do. Ah. Uh. I mean, their their ADPs are what like forty apart, so yeah. they're, they're going they're going close uh, four four 30, rounds. Thirty, Jesus, I can't do math right now. Was it thirty seven? Yeah, it's, it's not been 30, a strong suit on the pod, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> but, notoriously bad. Right, thirty seven like, so, picks apart. Yeah, I There's mean three four rounds. Yeah, Jordan Howard's still only twenty five. Um, so the, this is going to be his fifth year. And uh, I think he's just starting to hit his stride a little bit. I think the Dolphins are going to, especially especially if two is the quarterback, I think they're going to run the ball a ton. Mm-hmm. All right, flip-flopping positions again. This is one little grouping I'm excited to talk about, and that is the New York football Giants uh, wide receiver core. All three of these receivers are being drafted in the 40s at the position. Uh, You have Sterling Shepard being drafted as wide receiver 40, going 129th overall. Um, Well, 40th being drafted as wide receiver 40 on ESPN. On Sleeper, he's going 129th overall. Slayton is going, or excuse me, Tate is ahead of Slayton on ESPN, being drafted as the 46th receiver, just ahead of McCole Hardman, uh, ADP on sleeper is 144th and then Slayton going on ESPN as wide receiver 48, just ahead of John Brown and sleeper. His ADP is 105. So interesting to see. So the draft, the, the actual draft order is Shepard Tate Slayton. What would your order be or who would you, who do you think you prefer out of these three? It's a it's a dart throw. You think? You think you can argue any of them? Yeah, I really do. So last year on a points per game basis when they, you know, played, they were all within a point per week <laughs> uh yeah. from, from an average from an average perspective. Darius Slayton was wide receiver 35. He averaged 10.7 points a week when he played. Golden Tate, wide receiver 43, averaged 11.8 points a week, which is the highest of the three. And Sterling Shepard was 51, who averaged 11.3, who's literally right between the the two. Um, Targets-wise, 
two of them had 83 targets. One of them had 85 targets. They were literally all exactly like these yeah. three guys could not be closer together. Um, Darius Slayton was a rookie last year. Eight touchdowns. And yeah, I mean, him and Danny Jones really seemed to, to strike up a friendship. Um, that was that was magical. And so I honestly, one of these three guys is going to be great. Sterling Shepard, if he ever stays healthy, I think has the most talent of the th- of the three. Golden Tate is more of like the I think he's going to be the slot guy for them, yeah. provided everybody's healthy. And so that's more of a security blanket, him and Evan Ingram, provided he stays healthy. And I mean, Darius Slayton, every time you looked up the second half of the season, he was catching a touchdown, it seemed like. Um, yeah. So one of these one of these three guys, or even all three of these guys is going to be serviceable. Um, for me, though, I, I think it makes sense that they're going as late as they are because you just don't know which one it's going to be. <laughs> Yeah, like, but I think that they all, like, the 40s, I think, is an insult probably to all of them. Like, the, to me, they should all be going in the 30s as at least flex receivers. Like, the 40s is, like, wide receiver fours and fives. Like, this is late. Yeah, but um, you don't, like, you don't know which one to take. Yeah, but um, I don't know. I have I have an opinion. But, yeah, they're all extremely even. So, to really illustrate, again, how even they all are... Alex, out of uh, Slayton, Shepard, and Tate, who had the most 15-plus point games? In I would eight, assume Slayton did. In half PPR scoring. Yeah. Uh, they, all, they all had three. <laughs> okay. Um, in, out of Slayton and Shepard, who had more 100-yard games? I'll assume they're the same. The same, both at two. How many did Tate have? One? Yep, he had one. Um, so again, like, all of these guys are right next to each other in, in terms of their fantasy output. Like, uh, you know, Slayton's high highs were higher than uh, everybody else just because he was that eight-touchdown monster. Like, he had a couple, you know, multi-score kind of deals. Um but Shepard had almost nine targets a game last season when he was healthy. Tate, in the nine games that he played where Daniel Jones started, he had 76 targets, almost a 23% target share. Like, that is insane target share. But he only went over 100 yards in one game. They were, they were the little dump-offs. And, you know, like, I don't want that. That's, there's no ceiling there. There's a floor. Mm-hmm. That's to me, that's a that's like a waiver wire if or like a I don't know, a covid injury, you know, designation for two to three weeks. And I need a gap filler or a bye week like, OK, I'm OK putting Tate in and getting, you know, five to 15 points, you know, because yep. I think he has that floor. But to me, the real question is Sterling Shepard or Darius Slayton. I think out of those two, I probably go Shepard because I want that veteran floor and I don't really want to put the healthy thing is just such a concern. It is. But I think if he's healthy, he's a rock, a rock solid potential wide receiver too. Like he was a wide receiver too, when he played last season, like the guy just can't stay on the freaking field. So I'm, I'm going to pick him up everywhere in like the double digit rounds, like ADP of 129 overall. Come on. Yeah, I I agree with you. It's it's just a lot closer than I thought it would be. Um, yeah, just lo- just looking at the perifs and I, with with how late all these guys are going, I think you should at least make it a goal to try to get one of them on your team because if you pick the right one, um, that's going to be really great. Yeah. Um, also, like if these three guys stay healthy and you have Evan Ingram, like it's possible that all these guys every week are between like 50 and 100 yards. Danny Jones throws for 320 yards and somebody's going to score a touchdown or two. And like, they're just going to be cranking out like 10 point weeks every week because it's just going to be so spread out and you can live with 10 points. 
It's fine. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right. As a nice little segue here, you have uh, Golden Tate is being drafted right now on ESPN as the 46th overall wide receiver just ahead of McCole Hardman. Who would you rather draft, Tate or Hardman? Um, probably Tate, honestly. Oh, Har- so Hardman. Hardman to me is the ceiling, and if I'm here, I'm I'm swinging for the fences, man. I don't want five points a week. I wanna, I want him to potentially overtake Sammy Watkins, and that's our next question here: is Sammy Watkins or McCole Hardman this year? Yeah, so it's so hard because Nicole Hardman only had 26 catches last year. <laughs> yeah, okay. He also scored six touchdowns on him. No, I know. The guy's that's, electric. That's, he catches catches a pass, or, you know, he scores a, a touchdown once every five passes he catches. Like, that's, that's absurd. Okay. Um, you know what else is absurd? Sammy Watkins finished, with, finished the season with 112 and a half fantasy points. Of those 112, more than 42 of them came in the first game. The guy did week. nothing the rest of the season. He was hurt. I, I he's always hurt. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm taking McCall here, and he's being drafted like what two and a half rounds ahead of Watkins right now. Um, on sleeper. Yeah. And I think he's the fourth option in that offense. I think Watkins is the third option. So I would rather have Watkins. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm just saying because he was he was the fourth option last year because he was a rookie rookie wide receiver. So maybe I'm saying maybe he can overtake Watkins this season. You know, I, it's, it's, he's not a <laughs> yeah, slouch. It's, yeah. I mean, he's faster than all get out. Yeah. Um. Tyreek Hill did beat him in a 40-yard dash, though. Well, yeah, I mean, Tyreek Hill's faster than F. Um, but, yeah, it's, I mean, Sammy Watkins, like 50 more targets. He had twice the amount of catches as Hardman last year. <clears throat> we don't know, like, if that offense does what I think it's going to do this year, and provided they all say, I think Watkins is the guy that I would prefer. I think yeah. Mahomes gets back to throwing fifty touchdowns, and they got to go to somebody. They're not all. They're not all going to to Hill and Kelsey. They're going to go to Watkins. Hardman's electric. He's going to be fine. And then you know, Clyde Edwards Hilaire is going to have a bunch of catches and and some touchdowns too on screens. Yep. So I mean, Hardman is the like. Again, this goes to how do you how do you want to draft Watkins when he plays is going to be more consistent than Hardman when he plays. Hardman is going to break off an 80 yard touchdown um, and you're going to be like, oh, that was a great start. I meant, you know, I totally would have done that. But that would have been I mean, literally he's going to have one catch 80 yards and 14 and a half fantasy points. Yeah. So I I think Watkins has the higher floor. Um and I think Hardman's your home run hitter. Um, but I I don't think that, like, I mean, Hardman was averaging a, a catch and a half a week. Like, do you do you really want that on your, on your team? I don't know if you do. I'm just, uh, to me, he's a dart throw at this point, like where you're getting him right now. Uh, however, what I will say is, I think that there are more attractive dart throws where he's going. Yeah, that's uh, what, yep. And so, like, Darius Slayton is going in the Hardman range. Keyshawn Vaughn is going in the Hardman range. Ruggs for Vegas is going in the Hardman range. Like, Ruggs is going to be a starter on the field every play. Like, you're not worrying about that. Zach Moss and Antonio Gibson. Granted, I think Antonio Gibson will not be there come next month when a lot of people are drafting. But Your guy. But he's there right now. Um, and I would take any of those guys probably over either of these two. So, and then yeah. lastly, I agree. let's our final, um, our final teammate turmoil, carry on Johnson or Deandre Swift. Um, 
can we can we drop can we drop in my reading of the Detroit running back history again because yes. I really enjoyed doing that. I was gonna. I mean, to me, the biggest thing is like in this range. The Stay guys, away from both of these guys. Yeah, in in the in the Swift ADP range, which is currently 65th overall, you have Cortland right Sutton. next to Marlon Mack. <sighs> Gross. You have. I mean, he has he's better value than Marlon Mack. Marlon Mack didn't or Marlon Mack lost his job. DeAndre Swift is being drafted to fulfill a job. Um, True. But in the Swift range, you have Cortland Sutton, Cam Akers, Brandon Cooks, Devontae Parker, Kareem Hunt, and Ronald Jones. I think I probably like most, if not all, of those guys to DeAndre Swift and the inept uh Detroit Lions running offense, rushing offense. Yeah. Um De- carry on currently has an ADP at 91st overall uh, guys by him that I like more than carry on James White, Deontay Johnson, L- Lat Murray, Darius Slayton and Keyshawn Vaughn. I mean, again, I like all those guys more. I'm really swinging for the fences down there and carry on to me is not swinging for the fences. Like drafting a guy who lost his job, like there's not ceiling there unless the guy that got drafted is hurt. Yeah, so. and, I mean, Bo, and Bo Scarborough's there too, which, I mean, I know he wasn't great, but I mean, that was their guy at the end of last year, and he's still there. Um, I, man, you're taking, stay you're away. taking Swift at the beginning of the seventh, or no, sorry, beginning of the sixth, right? So he's sixty five, so he's going somewhere in the sixth. ADP, yeah, sixty five. So yeah, right, it's right in the mid mid six. For yeah. for the Detroit Lions starting rookie running back. Like, no. I, I I would take Cam Akers there, who's going as 71st overall, even though Akers is in a three-headed committee. Like, I like that offense so much more than I like the Detroit offense. Yeah, right. Like, how is Ronald Jones going after him? He um, I don't think he will, though. Like in in No, I, I don't think he will I don't either. Think he will. Yeah, and I mean at that point. Are you better off taking J.K. Dobbins in the highest rushing offense in football than you are yeah, in, right. one of the, like, in, in the worst rushing offense in football? You know? Yeah. Or or yeah. like the Kareem Hunts who like, you know, you're you're I I I want the person with the highest upside, like Lat Murray, who was a running back one when uh Kamara missed a couple games last season. Like Kareem Hunt, yeah. if Chubb it goes down. Like I want those guys. I don't want DeAndre Swift there. Yeah, I, I would rather take Alexander Madison too, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I'm potentially like just just be, just because that upside again in one of those higher rushing offenses is just so much better than an offense that they're going to run the ball like twelve times a week, and you're going to be like, you're just going to look at them sitting on your bench and just be like, why? Why did I draft? Did it? I like? Why did I draft this guy? <laughs> just don't. Just don't. Just stay away from it. Don't do it. Yeah, and I, I do want to shine a quick, maybe a quick little spotlight on James White being drafted right behind Kyrian. Like, I'm a little excited if Michelle misses time. Like, I, maybe yeah, but Lamar Miller's there. Okay, M- Lamar Miller hasn't played football in like a year and a half, so I don't know. You don't think that there's any maybe potentially increased value for James White? There's nothing sneaky or not, intriguing. Not when Lamar Miller got signed there. Gotcha. All right. Like maybe I'm I alone. just. Yeah, I mean a, a little bit. Like if you look at uh, Lamar's catches for his career, uh, 26, 38, 47, 31, 36, 25 in 2018. Like he's got hands. Um, so I like I feel like he's more versatile um, in that offense. So I, yeah, I just. Their whole offense has just become a stay away from me unless you're going to take Cam. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think, uh, well, I mean, we we didn't actually line these guys up, so this is more off the cuff, but I feel like the last really teammate turmoil is uh, at at the running back position are, are three running backs. I mean, there's so many, though. Like, you could do, you could talk Mark Ingram, J.K. Dobbins. Both guys are, I think, values. Uh, Cam, the Cam Akers, Daryl Henderson, Malcolm Brown. I think Cam Akers is probably the only one that you would probably draft. Um, and it's just how much you like him more than the other three, the other two. Yeah, right. I, so that's the thing. If you just look at those two offenses and you're going to compare the Rams to Baltimore, 
like you'd rather have all of the Baltimore running backs before you take any of the Rams running backs just because they're going to be running the ball so much more. So, yeah. and and you got to assume that the Rams are going to keep throwing the ball more because they got rid of Gurley. And there's th- like, a lot of this just comes down to know what their offensive tendency is. Take the Baltimore running backs, take the Rams wide receivers. Like that should be pretty easy. Take Detroit's wide receivers. Don't take the running back because they're not going to throw the ball or because they're going to be throwing the ball so much. So like it's just like some of these ADPs though, man, you just look at them and you just immediately you're just like gross. And yeah, you, like, those are the picks where when somebody takes, you know, Jonathan Taylor in in the at the end of the fourth round, you're like celebrating. You're like, sweet, I wasn't gonna take that guy anyway in the next like two rounds. Yeah. So especially th- thanks for thanks for leaving me somebody else to take. Yeah, especially when it's like frees up freeze you up to get DJ Moore, Tyler Lockett, Robert Woods, or DJ Chark instead. Like, yes, please. Hello. Yeah. All right. With that, let's move on to uh newsy stuff. <laughs> Newsy stuff. <laughs> Let's go. All right, newsy stuff. Uh, we got a lead story here. A 29-year-old Asian woman flying in China uh, was intoxicated and broke out her window on the plane. Oh, no. Drunk flying in China. Uh, after being arrested, it was said that she lost control of her emotions. Alex, you basically fly for a living for your job during non-COVID situations. Can you top that? Is there? Have you seen anything crazy? What's the craziest thing you've seen on an airplane? Um. Okay, two things. One, we got stuck on on a tarmac uh, leaving to go to D.C. Um, for last, air? Sp- last spring, yeah. And literally, while we were sitting on the tarmac, like eight people got up to use the bathroom, and I was sitting right next to it. And I'm I'm just sitting there. I'm like I'm like people. We we have not <laughs> pulled away from the gate for more than like twenty five minutes. How do you have to pee go already? To- Go to the freaking bathroom before you get on the plane. There's my PSA. My my favorite thing that I've seen, like I haven't seen anything like terrible or, or anything on, on a plane. Um, no snakes even, but I the <laughs> the most that fun a horrible reference. What? Wasn't that bad? You laughed. Um my favorite thing that I've seen on an airplane was there were some ladies drinking wine. Um, and just like having a good time. And one of them told like the stewardess that it was her birthday and it was like, we were all flying home on a, so on a Friday night. So there was a lot of business people, um, on the flight. And so the, the, uh, stewardess like got up and was like, Hey, it's Michelle's birthday. Can everybody please turn on your overhead lights? And so literally everybody turned their overhead lights on both sides and we all sang happy birthday to her. So that, that was like, that's awesome. Yeah. That was one of my favorite things that I've seen on a plane. That's amazing. I don't know if it tops a drunk woman blowing out a window because uh, she lost control of her emotions, no, but and, still and much so classier. Like, I, that's why I always try to sit in the emergency exit row because I know I'm at least one less crazy person that could potentially open up that damn emergency exit door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like one thank of my like, irrational fears of somebody that's just how like, you serve mankind. like getting crazy and just like open up and then you're dead. So that would be oh, bad. wonderful. All right. And then our last bit of newsy stuff. Uh, Chris Harrison is officially quarantined. <laughs> uh, Jojo Fletcher is now going to be filling in for him in the interim for The Bachelor. Uh, Chris Harrison dropped his son off at college. Alex, what are your thoughts? And he's he's quarantined. Who's, who's replacing him? Jojo Fletcher. I... Uh, is that like the singer that says, leave, get out. It's the end of you and me. Is that? Oh, not, that's not the same Jojo. No, 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 no. Um, Jojo Fletcher 
uh, is a real estate developer and American television personality who is best known for her role as a contestant on the 20th season of ABC's The Bachelor and is a lead on the 12th season of The Bachelorette. She's the one that ended up with uh, Jordan Rogers. Again, bringing it back to football, Aaron Rodgers' brother, Jordan. I thought we were going to be talking about like Olivia Munn and her podcast appearance where she might have been talking about uh, her sex life with Aaron Rodgers. Oh, she did? That's Allegedly, JoJo and yeah, Aaron Rodgers' brother. I could not care less well, about any about any of this. It's so. 11.45 and my daughter's sleeping, so I need to sleep and I'm sitting here talking about The Bachelor with you. Okay. So, you, okay. Well, we'll leave it. We'll leave it at that. That was the greatest newsy stuff we've had. The first. That's why it was the greatest. (laughs) From snakes on a plane to the bachelor. We're covering our bases. All right. With that, if you found today's episode enlightening, entertaining, uh, ground shattering, captivating, captivating, motivating, all of the aidings, any of them, please hit that like button. Subscribe. Uh, we're available on all podcast platforms and uh, f- what visit our website. What else? Anything else we need to plug? Oh, if you've made it this far, I think we, we need to do a giveaway of some kind. We're getting close to a hundred followers on Instagram. Um, our TikTok's almost at like 50, which is crazy because uh, we are not hip at all. Um, what Twitter is almost at a hundred. Like, we need to get some more followers and whatnot, and then then maybe I think we're going to be launching our first giveaway. So just uh, before we go, um, on our last video, we had somebody comment whose name was Lucy Curry, and she said... Bringing it back to the wow, studio for this. Wow, wow, with like heart shapes, kiss, and hearts. Do we know who this person is? No, I don't. I I assumed it was a crush that you knew, or like I don't know. D- you don't know this person at all. No. Maybe she. Maybe she had just gotten off an airplane in China, got access to her cell phone. That could be the same woman. We don't know. I have no idea. Maybe social- she was upset at our response. Our so yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Our social media coordinator responded to this person with was it the poop talk (laughs) (laughs) is that all it said was was it the poop talk it says was it the poop talk question mark it was the poop talk (laughs) because we started out last episode with you talking about poop again we're two for two since since the baby talking starting our podcast was poop oh man well i'm sure lucy's a fine young lass you're married with child i am uh engaged to be married so sorry breaking hearts already and only took 21 episodes yeah, I just clicked on her. Pretty sure she's a sex bot. So we can end. We can end the episode now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.